From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pucks Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome into the most ridiculous podcast in sports and pop culture. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hey, sorry. You can find us on the three majors of social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open this old Mayday beer and let's get after. As always, Pucks Out is powered by Mayday Brew, the official beer of Pucks Out Podcast. And we are closing in. We are about nine days away. Uh, join us on July 6th to celebrate our boy Brandon's birthday. And play some bingo at Mayday Brewery. Uh, no matter where you are, you know, book those flights, rent an RV, get an Uber, come out and visit us uh, and play some uh, bingo and get a chance to win some Nashville SC tickets, meet some new people, make some new friends, and have an overall great time. Uh, today, we are covering a crap ton of news. We've got the NHL awards to go over and much more. Uh, check us out on Patreon and Twitch to support the show. How you doing this week, bud? Doing pretty good, man. It's uh been moving pretty slowly. Waiting for that staycation. Uh crawfish, you know, have been entering my dreams. So, super jazzed uh, about that. Uh super jazzed about Mayday coming up. You know, just uh just pushing through. Had a had a decent weekend. Um uh, how about you, man? Anything big going on? Not much, man. You've been been uh, grinding, getting ready for this crawfish boil. Super excited for it. It was a little bit of a scare. There's been a there was a big drought in <clears throat> Louisiana, so you know we like a month ago I called all of our crawfish people. They said, "Yeah, no problem. As usual, just give us a call about ten day, you know, seven to ten days before the event. We'll get right, it sorted." Right. Called them at, uh, ten days before, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, we might not have any crawfish because there's no crawfish to be had because of the drought." And we're like, "Well, shit." So we're calling a bunch of people. We call down to some places in Louisiana themselves where we're, we might be able to pay extra and get them shipped up. Not, you know, let's get the middleman. Um, and they're like, yeah, no, uh, there's a drought there. But then one guy said, well, looks like we're going to have some rain this weekend. If that happens, uh, I'll put your name at the top of the list after the restaurants get theirs. We ended up getting uh, getting being able to get an order for 60 pounds. in, so I'm happy about that. Uh, but it was it was touch and go there for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, man. A big storm hit. And, I really, uh, I really you know, got, got everything a little wet. I really would have hated for our friendship to end on such a sour note dude. in the <laughs> pot in the podcast. And you got to make that awkward call, phone call to Mayday and say, look, we're we can do the show if you separate us in like separate rooms. Uh, but uh, it's good. It's good. You know, it's always good to see a friendship saved. Uh, when it was on the line and I had no, I had no idea about it. So uh, I'm glad to hear that. It, you know, I'm glad you just brought me this after it was just a scare and we've already resolved the problem. So uh, good. I, you know, it was a roller coaster of emotions for me, Bobby. I'm, you know, I'm yeah. immensely, I'm immensely glad with the result. So, yeah. well, I felt like the whole time I felt like Martin Sheen and Western just taking care of problems making phone calls, getting deals done. And, it, and you know, right. and, and Hey, picked up, picked up the red phone. And I, just I called in favors. Didn't have to go to, didn't have to go to the black market, which is, which is great. You know, I mean, that was the next step. You were going to have to go yeah. find a guy that sold crawfish on the corner out of a trench coat. And it's just like, Hey, how many pounds <laughs> can I get you, buddy? You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. it would have been, it would have been like that always sunny, uh, always sunny episode where they're trying to get a gun. And the guy's like, way higher price than the store than the regular stores when you're just buying it from a from a guy we know though we know the price he was like oh yeah <laughs> he was like well then you're gonna pay this price <laughs> so when you gotta need that's when you need a good guy with a gun bob that's when you need a good guy with a gun <laughs> uh, uh let's get a quick fit check i uh have been so busy all day didn't even i literally just threw on a hat right before we started but i'm just literally just rocking the preds uh hockey fights cancer hat uh which hey this will i guess they'll no longer be selling these no because longer the NHL has ended all theme nights no longer we'll um yes we'll discuss we will 
Uh, what about oh, you, dude? Yes. Uh, yeah. See, again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I wish I was doing something more important. It's like this random quiz that I found that I'm uh, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take this quiz. Um, no, I'm Which uh, Harry Potter you know, house are you? Uh, yeah, right. No, I already know. I'm a Ravenclaw, bro. Don't, <laughs> don't get in my face like that. It's not even that important of a quiz. Like, it's not something like interesting. It's like a bean quiz or something, man. It's nothing. <laughs> like, not of any interest. Like, I'm not even going to go find out what like superhero I am or anything. Like, it's, it's pretty garbage. Um, no, man, 4th of July coming up, went with the, uh, you know, the Southern proper uh, American flag shirt, and then obviously May Day coming up, I got the May Day hat rocking, ready to go. Nice. Uh, let's head to Inside the Boards for some news. Everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice, it's time for news from Inside the Boards. The NHL salary cap is officially set at $83.5 million. Um, 61.7 is the floor, and $16.7 million is the max salary. I don't I don't believe this has changed since last year, right? Or did they end up changing it? Because last I heard they don't weren't remember. Uh, increasing it from last year. Yeah, don't um, remember. But the, the NHL originals. salary cap is so drastically low compared to some of the other major sports in America. They have to do something about that. Um, I really well, hope they increase it substantially. Maybe they soon. increase the floor, you know, uh, hopefully. Maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, they don't have a max, which is great news for the Lightning uh, come playoff time. <laughs> uh, yeah. They'll just they'll just take the uh, luxury tax there. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is. It is you just look at 85, 83 million. That's like, that really is nothing, right? I mean, that's not, yeah, like that's that's easily contract for your, offensive line you know for a season uh yeah. football so um i mean it should go i mean you know put the money back in the sport instead of i mean we know you're getting a bunch of ad revenue now you can't even watch a game <laughs> uh you don't if you're not in, on the ice then there's an ad covering half of the players that you're trying to yeah. watch so i mean at least put a little bit of that money and give it give it to the players right i mean well who am i who am i can Nah, they're like, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, uh, to return to what we were talking about, Connor McDavid uh, calls the NHL's move to ban theme jerseys disappointing, and he is 100% right. It is disappointing. Um, there's an article uh, over on uh, CBC uh, that talks about this. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the NHL, I guess, Board of Governors or the NHL, the, the, the NHL Board of Directors has decided that players will no longer wear theme jerseys for warmups. Um, after one or two crybabies uh, got mad that they had to wear a uh, Multiple rainbow jersey. Colors. And, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. one of the players, I can't remember who it was now, uh, said, all right, uh, said, I have never worn a, a rainbow jersey and I never will. And then immediately within five minutes, someone found a, uh, a picture from the year before of him wearing a pride the, jersey. The I internet, mean, it was yeah, so obvious yeah. what was going to happen. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's so funny. And now, uh, Things like, like you mentioned, you know, hockey fights cancer. I guess hockey doesn't fight cancer anymore. Hockey is now nope. pro cancer. Pro cancer. Hockey now hates Star Wars. Like, how many people came to a hockey game that wouldn't otherwise? Like, how many, how many dudes that have never been to a a sporting event in their entire life got surprised by a girlfriend with like Star Wars nights tick night tickets or something? You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. It's so strange to yeah. me well, that so the theme nights will still be there. It's um, okay. the only so it's just change the, is that the players won't wear players, the jerseys, and the that was players yeah. will still. You know, people are allowed to hate cancer. Players are they're not actively pro yeah. cancer, but I can't determine if they are anti cancer like I am. If they're just a neutral party uh, down the line, yeah, it, 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 it's a it's a strange world we live in. We all have to do dumb stuff that we you know don't like at, at our jobs wearing a colorful jersey would just seem to be no big deal to me i guess you know yeah i guess I, 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 to, I, what people need Bobby, to, to do be with fair, this though, is <laughs> if, to be fair though if they came and said we're doing you know Al, uh, you know alabama night uh we're gonna need you to wear this alabama you know 
uh, Crimson Tide warm up. Maybe I, maybe, maybe, you know, this is like that quote. Uh, it's all good until they come for you. Right, Bobby? I didn't say anything when it was this guy having to wear multiple colors yeah. on, on his shoulder, but then they made me wear an Alabama Crimson Tide warm-up. I warm up. know you well enough that if there's enough zeros on that paycheck, you're wearing that Alabama warm-up jersey. I will. I will. I will. I will. You'll be, be reluctant. Just like, I will it. talk and pretend that I'm Harvey Updike, the guy that murdered those trees, if given enough money. I, <laughs> I love... I I love Auburn football, but I will sell out, buddy. No question. I'll cheer for him the rest of my <laughs> life. They'll be like, because like at least, you know, people sell out all the time just to be a bandwagon fan for yeah. nothing, just to be a part of the winning team. I'm like, yeah, sorry, guys. I'm paid to be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, guess yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so you, that's exactly, that's exactly the point, man. It's like, how silly do you have to be? And, and, these these the, the big the biggest part is they're just not honest with it right in my opinion if you yeah. are homophobic then just say that or you know whatever just yeah. outright say it don't don't fall behind behind some guys of a religious belief that is very very narrow for you that it only includes this you know i mean are you going to church on sundays are you you know are you actively religious or is this just a convenient thing of a group of people that make yeah. you uncomfortable uh and you want to say well it's my love for you know you as a person and and god's love for you that's why i'm not gonna i'm gonna do this but i did it last year but i but i've i've since had a uh yeah what 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 some people like to say a, a come to jesus moment <laughs> <laughs> but um, and even worse was the Russian players saying that it's because of Putin that they're not doing it. Like, bro, Russia mm. hated gay people before this year. This is and you, yeah. you guys had no problem doing it before. They did. Yeah, right. But, exactly. Uh, just you to know. just to call them out, cause, yeah, because I do believe that they uh, should be called out. Uh, let's see, uh, Ivan Provorov, James Reiner, Eric and Mark Stahl, uh, Ilya Labushkin, Dennis Gurriov, uh Andre Kuzmenko. Uh, are all people who refused to wear uh, pride jerseys. Uh, and, I, and I should put a separation in that Reimer, the stalls are the only ones to claim religious beliefs. The rest all uh, said it had to do with uh, quote unquote threats that their family got in Russia, which at the end of the, listen, if I'll that accept is true, that. and I'm not, I'll saying accept not true, that. I a hundred percent accept that. I would, right. yeah. If someone threatened my family, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna wear this Jersey. I mean, because they they all came out and said that they believe in the Pride Nights and they would wear, it, but they can't. And it's like the fact it that seems, Putin's just getting away. Like oh, at this point, Putin's like, openly like, "Yeah, I'm gonna murder your family if you do this." And, we're, and the rest of the world's like, "Ah, yeah, that Putin, he he's a rascal." Yeah, like, yeah, and, that, the, and and you know, and and Putin's got state sponsored podcasts such as ourselves out here spreading the good word for ooh, him. So. Ooh, ooh. Um, you know, uh, no, seriously, that's, uh, that is a new listeners a don't much, know why that the history. I know, of that. I know it's not, we're not state sponsored <laughs> yet. Uh, <laughs> we haven't got our contract offer yet, everybody. So you just, you'll feel free to stay tuned in. Uh, um, no, seriously. I that's, think part that's of the contract requirements is that we have family that lives in Russia so they can hold that's over it. our heads. We, gotta we don't have anybody that. we love in Russia. That's that's yeah. it. If, if somebody in our family could send somebody to Russia, that we would be the ones that got sent as like a, oh no, here's our hostages and we really care about them, so take good care. You know, the loser hostages that get sent. We're like, heck yeah! <laughs> Here at the uh, Kremlin, <laughs> bud. What's going on, boot? <laughs> <laughs> we would get we would get killed very quickly or sent back or something. We're gonna, we needed a hostage yeah. exchange, exchange type type program. Uh, but go back to the back <laughs> to the topic. I think it's very important that uh, that the voice of opposition to this is Connor McDavid. Uh, that list that oh, you yeah, named that, that is that, very important. That list that you named, while some known commodities uh, are not household names in worlds outside of ours a lot of times i think the really the biggest name you said there maybe ivan provorov um and, and james reimer uh has been been fairly well known lately but this is you know 
we're not doing that because this 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 little crop of of teams uh, of players ha- has said they don't want to seems a little short sighted. Uh, personally, I'd want to yeah. se- I'd want to sell McDavid uh, hockey fights cancer jerseys uh, just as a money thing. Like you know, corporations yeah. are all about that money. It just seems super sh- short sighted. Uh, again. Yeah, the, unbreakable. The names who have spoke against uh, the the names who have spoken for uh, for it are much bigger than the names that have spoken against it. Chris Letang, Sergey Bobrovsky, Connor McDavid uh, are just three of the names that have spoken in favor. I mean, those are three names, and Steven Stamkos. Those are four names. Those are household names in the hockey world. Everyone knows those guys. Yeah, I mean that's a list of fantasy hockey guys that are going to get drafted in the first two rounds on leagues that people don't even know anyone you know um yeah. so it's it's very a very interesting turn that uh, it's it's almost the opposite of the nba uh with the the amount of progressiveness in the nba and, and changes and and all that they do you know socially uh the nhl seems to want to be tightening it back up making it a making it a good old boy sport again yeah um, Tyler Toffoli traded from Calgary to the Devils for uh, Yegor Sharangovich. Oh, I'm gonna try that again, real quick. Sharon Govich. Uh, Yegor Sharangovich. Not even sure what I said. Right? Sharon Ganovich. I don't even. Know. Yeah, you, you just uh, you just <laughs> looked at the leaves and not the tree. You said Sharon, and then you were like, "Oh no!" And then you're Govich. It was. I didn't put a question mark, but you didn't read it all completely. Yeah. So, like, once you see it, because I did that earlier when I was writing, and I was like, Sharanga book? And I was like, oh, no, Sharon Govich. Like, I've even, like, I've heard of this guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, yeah. he's not, a, he's not like, super known, but he's a known commodity. So, I was like, okay, I feel yeah. like it. Yeah. I'm just glad yeah. I didn't do it on air like uh, you. <laughs> and a third, uh, Devils uh, are also working on a long-term deal for Timo Meyer. Ooh, man, this devil, uh, this devil's team looking good. <laughs> yeah, looking nasty, good. nasty. Uh, oh, I think it was like top six. Yeah, I think two two years ago, I said that the Devils would be Stanley Cup competitors within five or six years, and it's looking real nice. And I like their chances of making it, uh, a deep playoff run. Yeah, um, I mean, put Preds, out by this, the. This was a big one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, put out by the eventual uh, Stanley Cup contenders in Florida. I mean, it's hard to. Uh, not think, not agree with you that the Devils are on track. Uh, Timo Meyer was a great, great landing for them, but I think Tyler Toffoli is a great piece of what they, oh, yeah. what they, what they could have used. So, uh, love the trade there. While not the biggest of names, I think it really adds to what they have available to them. Yeah. Uh, Preds trade Ryan Johansson to Colorado for Alex Kachenyak. This one is a heartbreaker. Um, as a from a fan point of view, you and I really like Joey. We've got to see him do his magic on the ice for years now. Um, in Minnesota, we got to see him do the the back to back controller, then the very next not game. Yeah, back to back in Nashville. Um, but you know what? This was a smart move. Um, uh, by by the Preds. You know, clearing up four million of cap space. I believe they're going to move Alex Kachenyuk. I think uh, reports are that he has no intention of buying, like no, like of moving his stuff to Nashville. I, so they it seems like they told him, like, hey, don't come to Nashville you just yet. Where they're probably going to flip him for something as well. Um, the Preds are finally getting into the rebuild mode that they've been needing to get into for the last two seasons, and I'm happy to see that. Um, the NHL draft is happening tonight, the night of recording. We are recording on the 28th. So it's happening in like 30 week, minutes we will, uh, have a f- from us, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So we will have, uh, yeah, it's happening right down the road. So we uh, will have all the information for that next week. Uh, we Any have predi- the, uh, oh, Real quick, I just want to, I put it on there. I knew we were going to discuss it more heavily next week. Uh, any predictions? Um uh, for any team specifically, I mean Preds as I as more of what I'm thinking about. Um but I've seen it's it's a really wide open um, draft from what I've seen this year. A lot could go a lot of places and it really depends on on who falls where from what I've seen. Um I forget the most recent mock who I saw the Preds taking. 
uh, want to say Nate um, Danielson. I believe maybe? I read. I heard that uh, they were looking at a guy named Gabriel Perot, I think. I've seen Perot, but uh, I've also winner. seen a bunch of mocks where yeah. he goes right before us at 14. Um, Perot, but I've okay. heard Nate Danielson as a potential yeah. option. Uh, there's so many guys that they're saying like, oh, this guy could be, you know, top three pick or he could be he could fall to 15. There is so many opinions. Uh, my my other yeah. question is the the top defenseman, uh, apparently, uh, is a guy named Reinbacher. I don't know if you've seen anything about him. Um, if I, I don't think that from what I've read, he's not going to fall to 15. Do the Preds take him if no. he's best available? Yes. If he's best available, you take him. Uh, I mean, because I, I mean, I'm assuming he might, he could be a top five pick. I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the Habs take him at number five, to be honest. Yeah, I've um, seen a lot of, I, I mean, it's falling past the Habs or the, or Arizona at six. Yeah, I've seen Arizona uh, is is so much in need that they're really going to take best available, uh, and there are a couple of guys that uh, that are possible. There are a couple that I hope what we don't uh, that are tied in with some KHL contracts, and we've had that issue with Alexander Radulov before, where he has a KHL contract, we draft him, and he doesn't want to play for the Predators uh, or Jimmy VC, and so we're held hostage by that, uh, by that fact. So I kind of don't want us to go that yeah. way with a couple of those guys. Um, yeah, I mainly but, just don't want that to happen. Cause I don't want Preds fans booing someone for no reason. 10 years from now, to be honest, like they still are with, with, with and, uh, nah, Radulov. bro. Uh, Till the day I die. <laughs> Till the day I die. <laughs> VC too. Uh, McDavid. <laughs> yeah. McDavid misses, a uh, uh, unanimous heart voting by one vote. One voter put him in at, fifth this is the second year in a, uh the second time this has happened and you know what i think it's about time that we named this guy Obviously, no no i saw a very good tweet to put hold on hold on i saw a very good tweet last year same guy did it last year and it got him a lot of not- notoriety a lot of people contacting him reaching oh, yeah, out was- telling him he's garbage which yeah. in the online world if those people you know those interactions boost he you and you out. Exactly. Uh, so uh, somebody said the writer who put McDavid fifth on his heart ballot is the same writer who left Mc, both Mc, Matthews and McDavid off his ballot last year. Maybe it's a good idea not to give him the satisfaction of his name being out there this time because that's what he clearly wants. Um, I agree. This is a this is such a uh, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to be against the grain of everybody else. I'm going to put a guy who just dropped 160 points and how, how in the world, even with dry there, how is McDavid not the most valuable guy yeah. on his team? What are they without him? It, yeah. It's one of the true and actual I, winnings yeah. of the, of the MVP award. We so often want to, well, this team was really good this year, and this guy was the best player on this team, so he deserves it. Uh, whereas I feel hockey does an okay job, if you're, if you're in a market that they like, of giving really anybody a, a, a fair shake at it. Uh, not always, and not all you know, awards. But this is a joke, man. There, even if he's second, even if you have another guy you like better, there's no way that yeah. he was the fifth most valuable player for his specific team. Not yeah, and that was my anymore. thing. You know, if this was a, you know, even if he somehow was like, you know what, because of dry sidle, I'm going to give him a third because I think there are other players that possibly was more important. I could see like, that's a stretch, but okay. But putting him fit, it's just yeah, insane. Yeah, I want to, I mean, and frankly, who did he... I think, oh, this I think is the, the NHL needs to look at this guy and possibly take away his credentials. I've got point. his, I've got his heart ballot trophy. Uh, for last year and this year. Last year was, and it's hard to hate on his uh, number two guy from last year, Kirill Kaprizov, Roman Yossi, Igor Shosturkin, Jonathan <laughs> Huberdo, and JT wow. Miller. I mean, it, it, it's I not like he put guys bad up. guys up there, and I feel like those guys were valuable to their team, but this year it was David Pasternak, Jason Robertson, Ilya Sor- Sorokin, 
Matthew Chichuk and Connor McDavid. Matthew Matthew mm, yeah. Matthew Kachuk had a I don't want to say like a no, mediocre season. season, but he had a fantastic postseason. I don't want to say he had a mediocre season, but they barely scraped into the playoffs after a blockbuster trade yeah. that he requested to make happen. Um, and he showed up. Look, he showed up when he was supposed to, Mr. April. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing, no, no hate. But what happens and what happens? past April 15th isn't supposed to matter, right? It's supposed to be done 100%. and out of your, out of your brain. It's just, uh, it's a bad look. Um, uh, okay. Let me ask you yeah. this. I how don't know often, what the rules are for, go ahead. I was just going to say how often, uh, maybe they wouldn't have won as many games and wouldn't have be- got the record, but the Bruins would have been fine and been a playoff team without David Pasternak. Now, that doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve a spot on this list just because his team was good and he has good players around him. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But to say that if you took David Pasternak away from the Bruins, they are still contending, uh, in my opinion. And so I, I don't I don't feel the same 100%. way about, about uh, yeah. Connor McDavid and uh, Edmonton. Oh, yeah. I mean, without Connor McDavid... Uh, I think Leon Dreisaitl falls off a little bit, and they miss the playoffs. Oh, same guy. Patrice Bergeron, fourth on his Selkie ballot, ballot le- this year. Eric Carlson left off the Norris so ballot. He's a, he's a, so so he, he, left Nor- he left Carlson off his Norris ballot. Yes, and his, his Norris ballot included Mikhail Sergeyev. He, he's just, he's just a, a contrarian. He's yeah. like those assholes that say they will never – ever in their life vote for a guy to make it into the hall of baseball hall of fame on their first attempt, no matter what, right. even if it's the greatest player of all time, they will vote. No. And it frankly, is. I think the leagues should take those guys uh, voting right away. You are, you have shown now that you are not playing in the spirit of the rule. Hey, I, all, you know, the people that, Oh man, I've never seen game of Thrones. Just wasn't really my thing or something. All good. But there are people that wear that around like it's a badge of honor that I've I've never seen a Star Wars movie or I've never seen a Game of Thrones. Like you're actively, even if you would love it, you're actively not doing something because other yeah. people like doing it. And if that doesn't affect anybody, you not watching a Star Wars movie because you want to hurt my feelings doesn't hurt my feelings despite your want. So that's all good. But this is people's lives. There's no way that he wasn't unanimously yeah. the guy this year. Uh, no. So, uh, yeah, let's not say his name. Je- I'm going to say this guy's name. Jeff, uh, Jeff yeah. Fillett is the guy who, who is telling us about him. We'll just, we'll just give him a shout out. <laughs> nice. Um, the Kings acquire uh, Pierre-Luc Dubrois in sign, in sign and trade for, uh, for Gabriel Villardi, Alex LaFollow, Rasmus Kapari in a 24-second round pick. Um, uh, I feel like I was going to say that's a lot for Pierre Luc Dubois, but I just no. I don't know. I feel like Pierre Luc Dubois has been kind of silent recently. I, I, been I like been. this for the King. I really like this for the Kings. I think his style. I fits like it. In and really I'm, well. I'm excited to see. Yeah. I think the, a new location is going to uh, help PLD a lot. The jet, the, the, uh, Dubois is such a, it's almost like he's like a team player that just incorporates with, whereas Winnipeg was always just this whoever's time it is to show out type of deal, like Wheeler or Shifley or Connor, you know, dominating the game. And it's, it just seemed like never really to fit him like it did in uh, Columbus. So I love, I love the trade. Uh, I would love to see him work with Kevin Fiala uh, on his wing. Uh, is it a lot to give up? Sure. But remember, they just cleared a bunch of cap space uh, for themselves anyway uh, from that previous trade we spoke about. So I think that they were kind of game planning for this. Uh, I've, I've always liked Dubois, so I hope this works out for him. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Hayes to the Blues from the Flyers. The Flyers receive a 24 six round pick. Um, I think that's pretty cheap for kevin hayes who is yeah. a playmaker i think the blues are getting a very talented hockey player and i think that's going to improve the uh the blues a lot 
Ke- yeah, Kevin Hayes is one of those guys that um, his name rings out to to you and I more than than the the layman in the hockey world uh, because we see the the wide array of what Kevin Hayes can provide a team via fantasy. You know, he's just that guy that fills up a yeah. stat sheet and uh, does things that that other players. Uh, aren't really able to do. So I, I like that move for the blues. I hate it for us. I uh, hope, you know, well, actually, you know what? This is going to be a rare year for me, Bobby. I'm going to be cheering on all of our opponents to get better and stronger, faster, so they can beat the crap out of us and we can, and we can not be good. <laughs> I, so, so we are complaining yeah. about how absolutely bad we are come March. And we are using the predators as a punchline and jokes instead of us checking every week to see how we are still not eliminated from the playoff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we, yeah, we can wish all we want. It's not going to happen. It's twofold. It's twofold. You know, we want us to be bad, but you know, it's hard to, it's hard to wish, wish ill upon your team. So maybe this is how we do it. Yeah. We just wish yeah. uh, good fortune on the other teams <laughs> and no bad omens on our own. The Bruins trade Taylor Hall for Ian Mitchell and Alec Regula. Um, I mean, to, to the Blackhawks. Sorry. Um, Taylor Hall, man. Uh, yeah. I can admit when I'm wrong. It happens once a decade. But I thought Taylor Hall was going to go into Boston and just be that old Taylor Hall and just light it up and be a heart contender. And wow, was he not. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say that the Taylor Hall that we once knew is done. And he is a bust. Uh, yeah, he'll have to regulate himself to a role. I think. I don't think that we're ever going to see that Hart Trophy winner again, like you said. I think that that ship has sailed. Uh, but I mean, it's uh, it's a good thing for a guy like Connor Bedard to go into and play under him. Uh, you know, I don't think that in terms of commanding a locker room and leadership. I don't think that he's lost a, lost a step there. You know, he's still a guy that ha- has won um, yeah. at certain places he's gone to and, and played at a high level at a certain time. So he's got a lot to, to give, but I'm going to, I'm going to total agreeance with you. That this is the, uh, the heyday uh, we're going to see. We'll probably see him hit a couple more teams at a trade deadline. Um, or something like that. If uh, Chicago can get anything out of him at some point, uh, but I don't, I don't foresee any heart contention in the near future. No. Uh, let's move to outside the NHL. Now that you know what's happening inside the boards, time for the rest of the headlines with. News from outside the boards. LSU wins the College Baseball World Series against Florida. Um, I did not see it. I did see that Tennessee got in only because my father-in-law was thinking about possibly making a trip down there uh, to see them. Uh, But I believe they did it in some spectacular fashion. I I saw one of the games. Was like yeah, it was eighteen to, to zero. It was like eighteen that. to four on that final game. Uh, they ended up winning two one. Um, yeah, they lost pretty early. I think they lost their first game in the double elimination tournament and pushed all the way through, which is you know difficult to do in a double elimination tournament when uh, everybody has a chance to to play again. So um, great great win for them but it's it's nothing absolutely nothing compared to the lsu fans rocco's jello shot challenge win um i'm not sure if you've clicked the link there uh go ahead yeah i've I've been keeping up with this on twitter a little bit um now this this is is not enough this is not updated I'm sorry. It was actually it ended up being sixty six thousand um, for LSU. This was only fifty seven thousand. Well, this this the pic the picture they uploaded shows sixty eight thousand eight hundred eighty eight. Okay, good, good. I was making sure you got the right. Most so close recent. to sixty nine thousand. So, so close. close, so close. How I'm are you surprised. not getting that extra like two hundred? Um, I forget 
the owner of something big time went in and bought like 5,000 jello shots at, at one point. And, but just, uh, I mean, it was really unfair to allow LSU to be a part of this. Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, that's a, that's different. That's a different group of folk. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's like saying like, dude, let's do, yeah. let's see who can like throw uh, a rock the farthest and then bringing a gorilla into, into, <laughs> into the war, you know, that you've taught to throw yeah. things and he just chucks the rock like a thousand feet and you know, there's nobody else that can compete. It was a, it was a race for second place uh, for them. But can we just talk about the, the genius, which, uh, you know, it was definitely some low level employee, right? Like the owner definitely didn't think of this. But some low level employee is like, dude, we should do a world series of our own for jello shots. Then the owner went out and bought a hundred dollars worth of vodka and jello and now he makes half a million dollars off of LSU fans <laughs> every, you know, every year. Like, dude, this guy makes half a milli every year on Jello shots, dude. Like, now is this just for the year? Each year it resets, or is this? Yes, it resets time? every year because he just puts the new te- eight teams that make it to the College World Series and go to Omaha. Okay, so it's like a trickery. So like, fans are like, now. We got to go to Omaha so we can buy Jello shots at Rocco's type of deal. And honestly, yeah, who, who do you th- who are you talking to? We would be there, bro. We would we would never once leave Rocco's uh, in cheering for our team type of deal. You who, know, just on this list, who are you? It was obviously, Auburn's not on here. Maryland Notre Dame's not on here. Who are you buying Jello shots for? If you're walking into this bar and and you know there's a couple days left and you see like these kind of numbers up there right now, Oral Roberts, easy money. Oral Roberts? Yeah, dude, that's a basketball okay. school. That's like a so, that's like a You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, that's so that yeah, they they sold 95,000 jello shots in total. That is uh just under half a mil, which is abs- I mean that's just an insane. But he does it every year. Amount. He does it every year. You know, this is crazy. Yeah. Someone's making all those jello shots, and that's a sh- like uh I, some Sasa sent that's me an the, insane number. No, Sasa sent me the link. They there's this machine uh that they use called like Levo or something, and it makes oh. the jello shots for you. And the company is out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Good. So in a roundabout way, what? we're we're partially responsible what? for for this guy being rich as hell. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So dude, MTSU needs to make this because that right there, dude, imagine if MTU mm. MTSU's on this board. No, I don't no, no. they, they could compete. You have, you have to have a, I mean, we got to make it there obviously, but the big thing is you got to oh, yeah. have some sort of draw and Omaha. It's perfect. Cause what else is there to do in Omaha? You know, you do something like this in New York no, City. I'm saying MTSU shows up and like we MTSU fans it. go to Omaha. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. MTSU you don't needs get to on make the... it to the World Series. Oh, okay. So we... Yeah. We got a long road for that, I think, bud. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not just saying MTSU I'm, students go. I'm saying MTSU baseball needs to step I'm thinking, it up. See, Bobby, I'm thinking, I'm thinking what, what needs to happen is we just need to pick the underdog every year. And then go as fans of them. I think that we're gonna we're gonna be able to have much more fun that way if we get to go a- actually ever once in history. If we just wait for MTSU to make it, yeah. we're never making it to Rocco's, dude. No offense, <laughs> no offense, Sam <to> TSU <laughs> um, baseball fans. I do want to say what what an absolutely embarrassing performance by Virginia. I yeah. mean, we did you get math. beat out by Stanford, uh, bro. Virginia and Stanford were the two that were super far away from Omaha, like a really far, uh, amount. but it, I mean, you're right. Not even hitting, not even hitting quadruple digits. I mean, get it together guys. Uh, but they, they yeah, LSU and see, honestly, they shattered the record by Ole Miss, uh, that Ole Miss set, uh, last year. So let me see what that was. Record broken. Oh, I can't believe year. Peyton Manning didn't go up there and just put like a solid mill down on on Jello shots. Because if I'm yeah. rich, if I've got if I've got mess around money like Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing. He's already there. I'm walking mm-hmm. in and be like, "Hey, here's a cool million." I think he was at the P- Manning <laughs> like, Passing Academy. 
Um, if I, if I'm, because I remember a video of Joe Milton. Oh, I assumed he was there. I, I, th- I thought I saw a picture, but he may, he may have been there. But I did see this video of Joe Milton uh, at the Manning Pat, who is the Tennessee quarterback this year, will be the Tennessee quarterback this year. Uh, just casually tossing him an 80 yard bomb to the corner of the end zone to uh to a kid. Oh. <laughs> it was, I mean, to be fair, nobody's ever ever said Joe Milton didn't have the arm arm strength, you know. So uh, we will see what yeah. he can do with that. And I but, just read this as well: two dollars per two dollars of the five dollars per jello shot goes to charity, which is oh, I didn't even know it, man. Rocco's hell yeah, buddy, hell yeah. It's time for you to do, go on a vacation, man. College baseball world series is done. Omaha shuts shuts down for a year. Rocco's probably shuts down for a year. And then he just restaffs right before he's like, Hey, can you serve jello shots and count? They're like, yeah. He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. We finna make a half mil. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Very I'm sorry. Gentlemen, Jim's hasn't started doing this, uh, for the, uh, for March madness. I'm that sorry. Seems he, like something they would do like copy. He'll make, that. He'll make three hundred thousand because he's given two hundred thousand to charity, like a boss, yeah. <laughs> like a boss. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. Ryan Mallett, former NFL and Arkansas quarterback, drowned in beach in Destin, Florida, this weekend. Uh. Our thoughts go out to his uh, loved ones. Uh, well, I didn't know much his? about him. I didn't really follow much of his career. Uh, yeah, he was a he was an Arkansas quarterback. I believe he played with uh, McFadden and uh, Felix Jones when they had that awesome running back tandem. He uh, back he, he got drafted by the Patriots and backed up uh, Tom Brady when they were doing his. They were showing the video of him and stuff uh, that he died and what happened and when he was drafted. They. And, you know, instead of saying he played football at Arkansas and this and this, and then he was drafted and played for this team for, he said he was drafted by the Patriots and was, and decided to put in, and he was Tom Brady's backup for three years. And then just went on to say he played for the Ravens and like, I was like, was that a necessary, like little shot at my guy? Like, oh, he backed up Tom Brady for three years. You don't have to tell us that. Who cares? Who cares? Like, who cares who he backed? Not to mention, that's not from like. I pr- yeah. like if you were like, oh, like, Tom Brady's long time the teammate. In the last 20 years, you're probably a backup. You're a backup to Tom. But yeah, super sad. But um, on top of that, like, you know, that's like the like 20th person or something that has died. It was a riptide. Him and two firemen oh, and another guy were going in to uh, to save some kids in a riptide. And so. Uh, he was uh oh one of he was one of ten victims uh, of this. So not to put down their you know story. Be careful out there. Uh, that's this in the Gulf has had some very dangerous riptide. I would like to suggest to everybody that if it goes, uh, you know, above your knees, then don't go that far unless you got to go to the bathroom, then go out a little bit further and then sit down and then come back up to the beach and drink beer where it's safe. Uh, it it yeah. is no joke, yeah. dude. There ain't no swimmer on earth that can fight a riptide. It's not, you know, don't prove you're manly. You know, the ocean doesn't want to kill you, well, but it has a massive indifference to mm. you being alive. Okay. Yeah. I, I've been caught in a riptide twice in my life, and it is genuinely one of the scariest things in the world. There, there I've been caught is. in it once as an adult and once as a child, and it was scarier as an adult because as an adult, you know how dangerous it is. It's a and slide like, when you're a kid, right? You, 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 you just go with it, yeah, right? You, you, you have to go left or right to get out. But right. uh, uh, yeah, you got to go with it. And the pro- what, what, how people die is they fight it, and they, right. and they, they try to their, swim. You have to float a little bit and just kind of gently start going left or right. And I think that a people need to be taught that whether they need school, to be taught, whether that. it's these, parents, they should. Um, I mean, see the problem and is they also need to be taught how to look for them as well. Well, the problem is, is that they don't need to be taught how to look for them, Bobby. All of these deaths have occurred on double red flag days. So they, I mean, oh, no Jesus. teaching necessary, no teaching necessary. Hey, don't go out there. It'll kill you. It, it it will kill you so quickly that we're not we're not satisfied with just putting one red flag up. We feel the need to add a second flag to make sure you know 
that this is not a good idea. So I absolutely feel horrible. You know, even if well, even if those yeah, adults well, knew that. The answer is clear how to fix this. A third genocide? red flag. Okay. <sighs> I thought you were going with genocide here, Bob. <laughs> I was like, no, flag. man. Jesus. What the? What? <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, I was like, Bob, come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> come on, dude. I was like. <laughs> Come on, it's like the ocean's already trying its best, dude. <laughs> I'm saying, like, yeah, third red flag. I think that that's the next obvious step. Uh, education, you know, uh, to that to that fact could also be it wouldn't help. It wouldn't help. We give education on lots of stuff, and people don't learn nothing. So, uh, but very sad for for him and all of the families and friends and and everybody that's uh, had to go through this, but. Watch out for riptides, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's move into our main topic of the day. We're talking NHL awards, and we've got our uh, preseason award predictions to go over and who has won. Uh, we're going to go through this real quick. I'm going to go through the what we had um, in the preseason and in the midseason, and then Brandon will tell you the actual winners, and then we'll go over the points at the end. Uh, so starting off uh, in, the, in the preseason, uh, I had the uh, Avalanche winning the cup. I had the uh, uh, had the Avalanche winning the President's Cups, and I changed that to the Bruins. I had Connor McDavid as my triple down Hart Trophy winner. I had Marco uh, Rossi from the Wild winning the Calder, which I changed to Matty Beneers from the Kraken winning it. I had Chesterkin winning the Vesna, who I changed to Linus Olmark. I had Kale McCarr winning the Norris, and I changed that to Carlson at the midseason. Uh, McDavid, I had winning the Art Ross. Uh, Barkov, I had winning the Selkie, and I changed that over to Bergeron. Uh, Gerard Gallant from the Rangers had winning the Jack Adams and changed that to Jim Montgomery. Uh, for Rocket Richard, I had Austin Matthews, and I changed that over to Connor McDavid. GM of the year, which at uh, this point in the recording, we do not have an answer for that yet, but I don't, but that will only let you, uh, we'll only talk on that later if it uh, affects the outcome. I had David Poyle as GM of the year. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, who is no longer a GM, and I changed that to Don Sweeney. Uh, for Brandon, he had the Abs winning the cup and changed that to the Bruins, and he had the same exact thing for the President's Cup, Abs to Bruins. Uh, Austin Matthews, he had for his heart and changed that to Connor McDavid. Uh, Mason McTavish from the Ducks for Calder and changed that to Matty Beneers. Vasilevsky for Vesna, and he changed that to Linus Olmark. Roman Yossi for the Norris and uh, changed to Eric Carlson for uh, uh, Connor McDavid, his triple down winner of the Art Ross and Barkov to Bergeron for the selfie, just like uh, mine uh, and Gallant to Jim Montgomery for Jack Adams, uh, Austin Matthews to Connor McDavid for the Rocket Richard and Bill Zito to Ron Francis for GM of the year. Uh, who were the actual winners this uh, for this year's awards? It was super close. Uh, where you ended up getting me was the heart, uh, where I had Austin Matthews and then had to change it to the very clear answer of Connor McDavid at the midseason. And I lost a point there, uh, of which you lost none on my double down. You got, you got two points on my double down. So the end winner at this point. If if GM of the year uh, doesn't change the game, uh, you've won fourteen to thirteen. So really good job. I have no chance of beating you. I only have a chance of tying it up. Uh, of which case, I guess we'll then go to a uh, coin flip or something. You know, whatever. But you have a chance yeah. of winning by two points by by your <clears throat> GM of the year, Don Sweeney winning uh from from boston uh i have a chance of tying with bill zito and then if uh the third option wins uh then you will still win by one uh like you said we'll we'll probably bring up GM, gm of the year in casual conversation but there will be no need to bring up the fact that i've lost again so only if it changes uh the fact that you are now our reigning champion of the decisions uh congratulations man uh really good picks it made it a lot easier this year that we waited uh till too late to make our calls uh the only thing we missed was president's cup and uh 
I'm actually sorry. There, you actually have you actually have won outright uh, because. I've lied. Okay, never mind. I just wrong? didn't. I just didn't count. I just didn't count points for our president's cup. But we both said Bruins, so I misread and I thought yeah. that you scored and I didn't. So, um, yeah, congrats, bro. That means that both of us are hanging on to uh, championship trophies right now and belts that we got to kind of defend. Uh, me for games of the week. You for uh, preseason, midseason award picks. Uh. Good job, buddy. Good job. I think that I think that it, it was very, the most impressive thing is our GM of the year picks. Uh, we picked four people, and two of yeah. those four are in the three finalists. I think yeah. that's pretty impressive. That's that's always the hardest one to kind of gravitate yeah. to. That and Jack Adams, especially the preseason. <laughs> well, Jack Adams went was really easy when we did our second pick again. Uh, Jim Montgomery was winning that thing without a doubt. So uh, we got lucky there. Those are usually the ones that kind of separate us um, as we are usually pretty on point with the rest of the the choices. Yeah. Uh, You know, obviously I, uh, you know, you you put up a good effort. Uh, I want to first and foremost, uh, thank, uh, you know, Hey, you can't, I can't do it with, without this person. I want to thank myself um, more than anything. Uh, but yeah, so I think it's uh time to move into joke of the week. The weird Corey Perry. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't... Wild. I think that I think the first read was a good one. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Outlandish. Each sixth chick sat on a stick. A little tongue twister. And downright dumb. You're kidding me? It's time for the joke of the week. <laughs> I am not sure who got a hold of the actual death note recently, Um, but they are pretty cool because between what's happening in the ocean and now Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg uh, agree to fight in in, in the octagon in Vegas, uh, that by itself, just that headline would deserve to be a joke of the week, but it goes deeper than that. Um, After both parties agree to fight, uh, I want to say again that Elon Musk is 52 years old. Um, challenged Mark Zuckerberg, the 39 year old Mark Zuckerberg, who is a black belt in jujitsu, by the way, and a robot yeah. um, and a lizard to person. a 50 yeah, percent robot to 50% an MMA lizard fight. person. Uh, yeah. Um, this this was completely serious. This is an article from the BBC, and it it was Sports ready to Nation. go, and then. Couple days later, uh, it came out that uh, pretty much May Musk, Elon's mother, had been on social media being very vocal about how she does not want Elon to get hurt. She does not want this to happen. And then Elon pulls out of the fight um, because his mom told him not to. So once again, this is the <laughs> 50. 50- two year old billionaire pulled out of a fight that he instigated because his mom Mom told him not to bro uh, i mean dude like this is (laughs) this is this is a this is a movie scene this is a tv show scene bro i was totally gonna fight you but my mom said i couldn't so otherwise i'd totally whoop your ass but i couldn't i can't do it mom said i couldn't (laughs) My favorite is the uh, the Elon Musk parody uh, account that tweeted, "Mom, I'm fighting him. Yeah. Stop it, <laughs> Mom, I'm fighting him." <laughs> um, honestly, honestly, there for the people, there was no bad outcome. Right? There was no. There was no way that, that outcome this, is what happened is what we got that it right. didn't happen. This was yeah, honestly, this was the, uh, but honestly, the fact that his mommy, his mommy made him not fight, uh, is pretty funny, dude. That's pretty funny. Uh, that the keyboard warrior got talked out of the fight by his mother. Who's also on his platform. Just being like, my son's a, my son's a, you know, a wuss. Uh, we can't really be having him fight, uh, Zuck, you know, the Zuck. Who's a freaking robot, dude? That's what I'd have said. I'm not fighting him because he's not uh, human. He's not a human being. I, I only I only fight humans. So this is 
this is wild because we unfortunately many kids nowadays they don't get to enjoy the absolute magic that was celebrity oh my gosh yeah this is something that i felt like i would only have ever gotten to see on celebrity deathmatch shack 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 v kobe when people were debating and you could just bring up the celebrity deathmatch and just be like no no we don't have to argue this okay I'm on side of whichever celebrity <laughs> wins in the death match. That claymation, dude, this is what this is what it was made for. Can you imagine just having this much money and not like you could just talk smack and just want to fight all the time? Like that's it. But then your mom tells you not to. Like you have more money than like 80% of the world. And that's not me. That's not me being, you know. Ha ha funny and being exa- exa- exaggerating. No, no, I'm talking about 80% of the world if you combined all those 80% people, not oh, him being the okay, richest. Okay. I'm saying like 80% <laughs> of the actual world, Bobby, like <laughs> that portion of it. He's got more money than yeah. them. Uh, there's not many dudes on earth whose mom could get him to stop, stop fighting pre fight at all. I just can't imagine the guy with 200 billion. If you took the billion off, he's got more money than 80% of the world. Just $200 is more than the rest of the world. This guy's got $200 billion. It would take him spending uh, like $1.6 million a second for the rest of like 30 lifetimes for him to not have money. And his mommy would let him go fight. Yeah. Like, even if Zuckerberg wasn't you know, an actually skilled fighter because he uses his money to train. He's a black belt in jujitsu. He does boxing. He's been fighting. He's, uh, you know, he's out there. He's exercises a lot uh, because he has the money to have the free time. Like, I just, I don't know, man. Why? He is, he puts off a weirdly intimidating presence when he speaks just because it's like, is this guy like you? I, he's clearly controlling his avatar from his home. Mm-hmm. wherever he is mm-hmm. i mean and so he just gets in there and he he would murder elon musk absolutely, he would absolutely. Mur- like it would be it would be murder and to him it wouldn't even be elon musk dude to him in his mind it would be meta v twitter dude it's something he's probably been dreaming of the showdown yeah. for for since twitter was created and invented dude he's like i yeah he's like i won't fight jack dorsey but i will fight elon musk um i have seen that he is not a tough guy, okay, at all. Uh, honestly, not even a Zuckerberg guy, but Elon Musk, but at least he keeps his mouth shut, which is is enough for me. You know, if you're going to be a billionaire, an evil billionaire, which all billionaires are evil, no question, if you're going to be an evil billionaire, just do it behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? Like, just be evil behind closed doors why do it yeah. uh, out out and about like elon does um so i would have i would have been for zuck dude no question i'd have put some serious money on zuck too dude yeah frankly i think that they they need to do this yearly where they let billionaires fight it out like this uh imagine if like the undercard was mark cuban versus richard branson listen like, to this hear, hear me out bobby it would be all amazing billionaires all billionaires have a fight tournament or any type of tournament that they can agree to, I will. I'll be happy. They all have a tournament every year. We only have one one billionaire, and he gets all the other billionaires' money. Yeah. And then whoever else becomes a billionaire within that time frame, then he fights that billionaire. But the one thing is that billionaires just gotta like spend his money on doing stuff he can't be like a part of things he can't help make rules or like lobby or anything like that he's just that's his position he's the world's billionaire you know what i'm saying and he gets to do all the dope stuff that billionaires get to do and nobody can hate on him for it you know he gets to crush worker rebellions and ride on big yachts and nobody can give him shit for it but then we'd only have the one i'm just like imagining like uh, yeah yeah we can That's all they one. want anyway. Like we, can, we can overthrow one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just imagining honestly, like the, honestly, like the, we under, wouldn't even the need the undercard. To, like, we wouldn't even need to overthrow the one because if we take away like the one thing that he actually wants, dominion over us, 
That's where we'll trick them. That's where they'll trick them. They're, they think that other billionaires are their issues. It's like, no, ruling us is your thing, dude. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I was like thinking of like other matchups. And I mean, Barbara Kakorn versus Jeff Bezos. Another yeah. What about, uh, like and now there's got to be, would get his ass with. there's got to be, there, there are inevitably billionaire teams that you can't split up that are like a tag team match, like the Hardy brothers or something, dude. Uh, it's like the Koch brothers, like they fight as a team. So you would have to team up with another <laughs> billionaire to fight them. Uh, so, oh, the, the like Walton Richard brothers, Br- Jim, like, like uh, yeah, the- something like that. Like, you know, Amy Adams strunk and like her brother or whatever, you know, <laughs> like, like she got to find uh, a teammate. W- w- yeah. <laughs> they have to yeah. be a billionaire. Michael though. Bloomberg and uh, Warren Buffett. Yeah. You can't go hire a ringer. Like it has to be another billionaire. And yeah, you can't just make them a billionaire either. Like they had yeah. to have come. They had to have come to that billionaire status via blood. Oh, yeah, because without a doubt, Russia or China or someone would be sending like Putin. it's like, when did right. Mike Tyson become a billionaire? Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Dennis Rod. It's a, they, they, the billionaires choose basketball and Kim Jong Il makes Dennis Rodman a millionaire, you know, or a billionaire. I mean, and so like he fights for North Korea or whatever. Yeah. Um, I do want to really quick before we move on, talk about something that was that you said, Dennis Rodman, and that put it in my head. Um, a extra joke of the week. And that is that Dennis Rodman said that if Larry bird was playing in his prime today, he would be playing in the Chinese basketball league that he wouldn't even make it into the NBA. And that is so absolutely outrageous. And that also says like, what then where would Dennis Rodman be washing dishes somewhere? Like, good Lord, man. Like, no, Larry bird was an absolutely fantastic player. It wouldn't like, (sighs) Three pointers with, are three pointers like that's a shooting like, that's ability. Insane. Yeah. And oh, I mean, court vision. And I mean, he's saying that because Larry Legend's white and Larry doesn't care about Dennis Rodman, doesn't care what he has to say. Uh, I would have to imagine. But no, Gary, uh, Gary, Larry's game was timeless. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those rare yeah. games that you can insert in any era and they would be successful. Just like MJ, just like LeBron, just like Kareem, just like Wilt, just like Dr. J. These guys would have been successful in any era because it wasn't the skills that they possessed were absolutely illuminating for the basketball in their time. But it was their innate ability to create those skills that made them better than their opponents in my mind. Right. Kareem made the sky hook because he kept getting fouled and you couldn't dunk uh, at the time or whatever. Maybe that was Wilt. But anyway, he kept getting hacked going in and not getting calls. And so he changed his game to make it work. So I I just disagree. It's like saying Tim Duncan because he wasn't flashy or wasn't, you know, uh, Michael Jordan or Shaq or Kobe that Tim Duncan while being boring to watch, isn't one of the greatest basketball players that ever played it being flashy has nothing to do about it. Right. If he can score 30 points on you by a small baby hook layup, then that makes him better than you. If he wins championships and you don't, then he's a better basketball player than you. And so no arguing that the big fundamental isn't, is it great? Uh, so I'm with, I'm, I'm with you, man. That's a, such a silly comment and I'm a, you know, yeah. I'm a Rodman guy. So. Yeah. Um, let's move into what are you binging? Uh, we'll, we'll be quick with this. Uh, the wife and I started the show. We literally just saw it randomly on Amazon prime. It's called deadlock. It's a, a show based in ta- Tasmania, Australia. Uh, it's a dramedy. I would say it's uh, a, uh, detective, you know, de- uh, finding out who killed all these people in Tasmania, but it's very comedy forward. Um, And it's like a lot about, it's uh, pretty much the base is like a very, very small town that has very recently uh, become very progressive. So there's a lot of, you know, LGBTQ plus people moving into this small town. And so the detectives and all that are dealing with that. It's, and it's just, it it is honestly one of the funnier shows. They're thinking about canceling theme nights. In the city is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's, cool. it's, it's, it really is. Honestly, it's a good watch because it's like, it's one of those shows, you know, a lot of these shows, sometimes they lean too heavily into the comedy where it's like 
not a serious show, right? But it's still very serious, and they are just able to get the right portion of comedy uh, to not make it a full on slapstick uh, detective show. Um, Excellent. It, it's like it, it would be. It, it's a good mix of Nine Nine and Law and Order. If you ask. Okay. Me. Cool. Sounds good. What did, What did you say you were watching this on? Uh, Amazon Prime. Okay. Nice. And nice. Maybe I was we'll really surprised because I thought I thought that the it was a six series. Mini, uh, like miniseries, now, six episode miniseries. I was like, yeah. all right. I'll you hear time. another I'm language. The, uh, yeah, you hear another yeah, language, and, I'm the, and you're end like, of there's episode gonna six, be. And they're about to who, I, and I think they're about to like reveal, like finally solve this case at the finale of this miniseries. Nope. Then I'm like, what? How? What? How would a horrible ending? Then I look it up. Nope. It's a full on series, and it got it's an actual two. series. And so I'm like, oh. Let, let's go all right i'm here for this <laughs> yeah you hear british talking as like the main aspect of it uh it's gonna be six episodes right but they're gonna be like three hour episodes i forget on the good yeah. place when uh uh tahani's character i don't know if you've, have you seen good place I've seen some of it i've seen most of it yeah uh, so tahani's character is like uh oh my goodness it was like a hit show on the bbc it was on for 20 years, had nearly four seasons or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what that reminds me of. So awesome. Awesome. Uh, maybe we'll check it out. We've been looking. Uh, we just finished up Monk as our nighttime sleep sh- sleeping show. So maybe we'll find uh, something nice. else. Uh, new season of Righteous Gemstones just came out. So seeing the first three episodes of that. Oh, hilarious as always. Uh, love Righteous Gemstone. So very glad that that is back. Uh, but also an Apple TV show um, with uh, Seth Rogen and some Australian girl. But Nobody essentially, uh, it's called Platonic. And uh, they are, they were friends through college and stuff. And then. Uh, Seth Rogen's character got married and she hated his wife and he, she told him and then they were not friends. And then the series starts with the uh, this guy being divorced, her finding out about it and reaching out and they've re- kind of reconnected. So like a platonic friendship between uh, a former lawyer turned, you know, housewife and. Uh, Seth Rogen's character, who is a brewmaster at his own brewery type of deal. And so they're completely opposite, but they're friends and, you know, super, super funny, dude. I, I really I've actually really enjoyed it. Nice. I wasn't I wasn't sure uh, if I was going to like it or not uh, by the uh, by the beginning. But Stephanie wanted to watch it and I acquiesced and it was very good. So I'm, I'm glad that we have started that. So. Uh, it's still nice. coming out. Devil, I think they just uh, came out, out with episode eight. So nice. Uh, let's head in and wrap up with some uh, what's snapping your stick. Bobby and Brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks. All righty. Listen, by now, I'm sure everyone knows about the Ocean Gate thing. Um, and that is not because and, and I want to some people are obviously when I say some people, a lot of stupid people think that they're calling people call it Ocean Gate because of Watergate. And it's a scandal. No, the name of the company is Ocean Gate. Um, <laughs> the sub that went missing uh, and by missing, I mean, it imploded and killed a bunch of uh, killed, killed five billionaires. Um, listen, people are going to joke about it. I'm going to joke about it. And called- what I don't want, and what's really stabbed my stick, is people telling people they shouldn't joke about things like that because people are dead. People <clears> have been joking <throat> about dark things since the beginning of time. It's called gallows humor, and it is a yeah. it is a very effective way of dealing with very serious things that I'm sure you understand that it's serious, right? I don't think that anybody once said that just because they're billionaires that their sub should have blown up. But they are already dead. The sub's already blown up. Me making a joke about it. Blown in. Uh, blown in. 
ha, 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 ha. See, very funny. <laughs> uh, me making me or you making a joke about it doesn't change that fact. But if we're able to lighten the situation a little bit with humor, I don't think that you think that this is that that people dying is funny. But if you're able to make a joke out of something that is otherwise sad and cause somebody to laugh, that's a good thing, right? The change is nothing whether 100%. you make the joke or you don't make the joke. So uh, gallows humor is a real thing. I've got your back, Bob. Uh, you sent me a very funny meme regarding the sub earlier, dude, and I found it hilarious, and I, I sent you laughing faces back. So uh, with you 100%. Mine, super quick. Yeah. Slow week and, at work. Uh, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. oh go no, ahead. no, you go for it. Go for it. Um, I was just gonna say that I, I have had a I've had a rule when it comes to comedy and jokes my entire life. Anything and everything is open to jokes. That does not mean that you're free of consequences. Sure. And also, sure. my rule is the the worse the thing is, the funnier the joke has to be. Absolutely. If you're gonna make a Holocaust, nine eleven, or something, a joke like that, fine. But it better it's be land. very, very, very funny. It's got to land. Because if it got, doesn't land, and, and it can't listen, be a we've thinker. all been there. We've all made jokes that didn't land. Then it's bad. And it can't be a like, thinker. Yeah, it, you know, you got to make sure it hits. You know, I'm, I'm with you. I agree. I agree. Uh, my what's snapping my stick is I, I put on here slow week at work. That makes it sound like I haven't been busy or I haven't been able to do anything. That's not really what I mean at all. I mean that the minutes are literally ticking away at what feels <laughs> like a six minute pace. Uh, one minute is equaling six minutes. I feel like a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like my life is just vastly expanded <laughs> throughout this week uh, because of the pending staycation. So um, just ready for that to be over. Um but other than that, you know, it's hard to hard to complain about the about this upcoming week, getting to getting to see all the peoples. And uh, now that I know that all is good in, in crawfish land, I'm feeling even better. So. Uh, let's go, Bob, get us out of here, buddy. Yeah. Hey. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out for Brandon. I'm Bobby. This has been Pucks Out Podcast, and we'll see you all again next week. And Don't forget about July 6th. Bingo at Mayday. We'll see y'all next time. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Pucks Out Podcast. To see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to, check them out on Twitter and Instagram at Pucks Out Pod. 